Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Praise God. He's awakened us to another day. I welcome you to the Church of God of Prophecy Daily Bible Study, where I read through verses and commentary of the Bible in the book, One Accord published called Evangelical Sunday School Commentary. Um, we're in Lesson 13 this week. This is the second day of our study, and we're still in Section 1, and 1B is titled, The Certainty of Judgment. And then we'll start section two. And section 2A is titled Scoffers as a Sign. Okay, let's let's pray to our Father and then get started. Dear God in heaven, we come to you thanking you for another day of blessings. Another day of your will being accomplished through us. Use us, Lord, to accomplish your will. Enable us to know your will. Give us wisdom and strength to follow you. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. 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 Okay. Section 1B, the certainty of judgment. Okay. Second Peter is our reference. Chapter 2, uh, verses 4 through 9. But we'll only read verse 9. And verse 9 reads, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. God knows how to deliver you out of temptations. And he does that by his word, by the truth of his word, strengthening your resolve to stand for what's right. And that takes study, prayer, and a relationship. Let's read the commentary. The commentary says, to further emphasize the certainty of judgment, Peter uses three examples of previous judgments. First, the angels that sinned, from verse 4, have already been cast into the abode with those who violated the will of God and now have no hope. Their abiding place is one of deep gloom and thick darkness. Their only reprieve is when they stand before God for final judgment. The second, the flood, Genesis 6, 5, 8, 19, 2 Peter 2, 5, is noted as an example of judgment upon the rampant wickedness of the ancient world. Only Noah, a proclaimer of righteousness, and seven other souls escape. Third, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Genesis 19, verses 24 to 29, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 6 through 7 is presented as a deterrent for those who would live apart from God. In these three examples, Peter also emphasizes the vindication or exoneration of the righteous. The angels who did not rebel against God, Noah and his family, and Lot and his family 
were vindicated through God's judgment of those who rejected his grace. The faith of the righteous. Pilgrims in the midst of a world that lives contrary to God's world is vindicated. The message is clear. God takes care of those who are his. You can trust God. He's faithful. He has only your good and heart. That's all he desires. And he is all powerful. So no weapon formed against you can prosper. There's no reason to fear. My son David woke up this morning. He had a bad dream. I said, David, you know, there's nothing more powerful than God. And he loves you. So nothing can harm you. Don't be afraid. And he said, yes, Dad. We all experience times of fear and uncertainty. Because the world is chaotic and evil. And there is destruction all around us. But God is faithful. And he protects you from this evil. Don't be afraid, ladies and gentlemen. God is a good God. Okay, let's start section two. Section two is titled Living in Light of Christ's Return. Living in Light of Christ's Return. Because he's coming back, there's a certain way we should be living. Okay, and section 2A is titled Scoffers as a Sign. And this is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. And it reads, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. I'm sorry, but things are getting worse. They're not as they were from the beginning. They're a lot worse. The book of Revelation is coming to fruition. It's becoming a reality. We're heading to the last day, the day of redemption. Okay, our commentary reads, False teachers have appealed to believers' emotions and have led some astray. That's from chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. These teachers are characterized and controlled by their own illicit desires. Peter appeals to the believers' minds and memory to help them regain their spiritual equilibrium. For emotions can deceive. Peter repeats a phrase used earlier, knowing this first, which serves to emphasize the importance of the information he is communicating. Ironically, the false teachers who mock the belief of 
Christ's return are themselves a sign of the last days. The New Testament makes it clear we are living in the last days just as the epistle original readers were. These last days were ushered in by the ministry of Jesus Christ. And that's from Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. Pentecost was a confirming sign that humanity is headed for the final hour. And that's from Acts chapter 2 verse 17. Verse 4 of the lesson text is a direct citation of the false teacher's views. Their language is that of taunting and mockery, something God's people have endured in history. See Psalms 42.3, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 15. In today's civilized world, the taunting might be less direct, but just as offensive. Christians are often depicted in the media as inept and ignorant buffoons who are committed more to a radical political ideology than their morals. We are in a hostile world and we must be careful of the image of Christ that we project. The false teacher's logic is, since Christ has not yet returned, he is not coming. Things will continue as they have. Okay, we have an insert here um, titled Broken Barometer. Okay, and it says in 1938, a man with a home on the south shore of Long Island ordered a barometer from a sporting goods store. It arrived on the morning of September 21, and the owner hung it on the back porch. Half an hour later, he peeked at this high-priced toy only to find the needle stuck at Hurricane. Quickly, he wrote a letter demanding a new barometer. When he returned home from the post office from mailing the letter, both barometer and house were missing. September 21, 1938, it turned out, was the day of the worst hurricane to ever hit Long Island. And this is from an article called Bits and Pieces. We are definitely living in perilous times. There's so much evil there's so many worldly ideas being instituted into our lives. Man's idea of how the world should be run, which is totally absurd. I can't believe some of the things that people think are right. Like abortion, for example. And I'm not saying all abortion is wrong, but abortion for convenience sake, it's not right. There's a lot of evil rules and customs 
and ideologies. There's no demonstration of love for mankind on this earth. It's every person for himself. The strong survive, the weak should perish. And if not, for the grace of God and the power of his Holy Spirit, we would be destroyed. We would have destroyed ourselves long ago because there is not one good thing in us. All that is good concerning us comes from God and man will not acknowledge that. Well, that's the end of our study for today. Um, thank you for listening and I just pray that my study encourages someone to seek a closer, more intimate relationship with God because that's God's desire for you. He wants you to find him. He's waiting. He's waiting for you to call out to him so that he can heal you and save you and preserve you. So until tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, be blessed, be kind, be Christ-like. Thank you.